back to the Rumble and Popular Opinions. It is time for another casual chat, casual chat part two. I have no idea what I'm going to call this video, but it could be like a tri-monthly, four-monthly <laughs> kind of thing where after I've accumulated a decent amount of books to talk about, I just talk about them. As last time, I will divide this video into like bad stuff and good stuff just so if you're not into the negativity just don't watch it but i think that there isn't that much in this chunk because december through march is my best reading time in the year i think it's because that's where, where school and now university is kind of the worst so when that is the worst i usually read more because i have more of a need to read more I guess and because this is my favorite season like December through March at least where I live is winter with a couple oscillations here and there but it's generally winter and that's my favorite time of year in general my favorite time to read my favorite time to actually have joy so this is a decent chunk of reading and I think I'm gonna have very different things to talk about but like off the top of my head right now, I only know good things that I read. I don't remember anything bad that I read, but I'm very sure that there is something. The mandatory. This is my favorite candle, by the way, and I'm a little upset about almost having used it up. I want to start off with the negative stuff because I feel like if you're in this just for a rant, we should get it over with, shouldn't we? we ha we're going to pull up Goodreads and we're going to probably not have that great of a time because recently, especially because it is my favorite like reading, reading months, reading mood, I realized that I've been hating ranting about stuff that I don't like. Like the last video that I published was my rant about Ruin and Rising, which was great. I thought that I was very eloquent. I loved the points that I rose. Like I just loved talking about it. And I feel like a rant about something that I hate just isn't the vibe right now. J just isn't. Like, that's why I avoid books I know I'm gonna hate. I've been avoiding and DNFing everything I'm not interested in, so we're going to absolutely do our best. We're almost done with half of our reading goal, but that is primarily because of manga. <laughs> like, just a pro tip, but I think that's very obvious. If you want to read a lot of books, read graphic novels or manga. <laughs> now, I'm gonna try and work through, like, my reading challenge books because it only logs stuff that I read now not stuff that I edited because I edit reviews sometimes so I'm gonna okay <laughs> let's talk about the bad immediately I the first book that I read this year rather finished was Age of Myth by Michael J. Sullivan <laughs> unfortunate truly unfortunate well I didn't hate that book I gave it four stars I DNF'd the second book, which was Age of Swords or War. I don't care what the second book was called. I DNF'd that, I want to say in February. Might have been in January as well, but I was hating it in general. And then I was like, just do yourself a favor. And I went to read one star reviews for book two, because when you don't like something, the one star reviews will really tell you the stuff that you need to know. <laughs> so I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't even anticipating that it would get this level of bad, but now I know. And I just DNF'd it. I've never felt less upset about a thing, I have to say, because while I gave book one four stars, I realized immediately after I finished it that I forgot everything. And I didn't care with a, about a single character, about a single thing that occurred nothing stuck in the brain like I couldn't have cared less <laughs> if I never read book two so when book two was that bad I was just like please give me a reason to DNF it and I got a good one I got a good one so overall I would never recommend this series to anyone <laughs> with critical thinking uh trigger warning in general in general for animal abuse <laughs> that's what got me 
to DNF ultimately, but I was going to anyway. Just know it it was <laughs> it was not worthy of my time, but luckily I got it two for one, so it's not that that much of a waste. But yeah, let's not talk about that anymore. Then I read some more of Ajin, which now that I'm looking at it, I read like five volumes in January. I haven't touched it since then. And there's a reason for it, which we will get to in my good part of the video. Now I'm just scrolling. I'm trying to find, oh yeah. <laughs> now I was in my Steinbeck phase also in January. I will talk about it in the good part too, if I feel like it. Just like in the last casual video, I don't necessarily have to talk about all of the books, just the ones that I kind of I mean, in the mood to talk about Steinbeck. <sighs> We're going to talk about the only book I finished and hated first of Mice and Men. That was just atrocious. I didn't give it one star. I don't because one star is generally actually better than two stars in terms of emotional involvement because two stars for me is just a bad book. One star is I viscerally hated this on a personal level. Like this, this offended me. This might not be an objectively bad book, but it offended me personally. So it, yeah, my Of Mice and Men got two stars. I just, I hated everything about that book. I hated the way it was written, the plot, the characters, the point of it, if there even was one. It was just, I think I wrote that in my review, it's just like a diary of misery. And while you're sat there reading it, you're kind of like, why am I here? <laughs> like, if you're this miserable, I don't know, discuss it with a friend or with a therapist or do a journal entry, Steinbeck. I don't need to read about this. I think Of Mice and Men is actually the one that got him the, it wasn't the Nobel Prize. Maybe it was the Nobel Prize, whichever, like, huge prize for literature. And I finished it because it was very short. I got it from the library. I almost bought it, by the way, and thank God I didn't. And I finished it. I remember just being like, unless you want to feel, feel miserable or this is a school project, why would you ever pick this up? <laughs> On a similar note, I also borrowed Grapes of Wrath. Now, Grace of Wrath was actually how I knew about Steinbeck. But thing is, I DNF'd Grace of Wrath, I think like, what, 150 pages in or something like that. Also, animal, animal abuse. Because I was like, there's only so much I can take. That's usually my end line, as I think you will notice. Because if nothing is, like, hooking me in, and then you add animal abuse... That's usually like my cue to leave <laughs> because if I'm liking nothing and then you cross that line too, then I genuinely have no interest in reading your book. <laughs> like no interest in reading your book. I can sometimes get over it if the rest of the stuff is good, but that's so rare it's almost non-existent. But yeah, that was why I ultimately DNF'd it. I hated it in general. Similar like the other one. I get what he was going for with Grace of Wrath. There's a bit more specific of a point that was actually somewhat decent some of the time. But just the writing feels so miserable and so hopeless and so... Like, you you don't want to pick this up unless you're in a really foul mood and you just want your mood to be fouled even more. That was my perspective while reading this. Keep in mind that I read both of these after my high when I read East of Eden. And I'm very, very grateful that I read it that way. Because if I picked up either one of these to try out Steinbeck, I never would have come within a mile of East of Eden. But we'll we'll get to that. I, I'm done with Steinbeck, definitely, so let's just move on. Catcher in the Rye. I've apparently been just reading classics this year. <laughs> I don't know why. I guess because there's a renaissance of classics lately and I've just been in the mood. Catcher in the Rye. I read this because I remember liking it in high school. I read it in first year of high school, so I was like 15. I remember liking it, but that was because, <laughs> that was because I didn't really read it that like that attentively. It's not the greatest. <laughs> it's not the greatest. It's not the worst. Like it, I read it very easily. Like I gave it three stars. I read it very easily. It reads like a diary, which is pretty much kind of what it is. 
do I understand the point of it? Also, no. <laughs> the thing that I've been getting with a lot of classics that I feel like are the best of the best and like taught in schools, like this is one of the first books, like first modern books that we read in high school. What was the point of them? <laughs> what do they teach you like not that they have to teach you anything but specifically because we did it in school I remember all the analysis we did we did on it and now that I read Catcher in the Rye like a normal person not to analyze it I was just like this is also kind of like the diary of a miserable person like why am I reading this I don't care for it I didn't like like any of the characters I didn't like what was going on it, there was no plot to be had. It's kind of just like Holden and his musings, I guess, while he's depressed. It was the weirdest experience because I have a very distinct memory of all the analyzing that we did and of all the passages we had to highlight and write an essay about. And now I read it and I was just like, this was the weirdest. Like, it was okay. So th this is not like a book I hated. I read it very easily and it was mildly entertaining. But I finished it and I was just like, I will forget about this two days from now. And I was right. Like, I read this, what, a month and a half ago, maybe two months. I forgot I read it. If you can believe it, that was actually it. That was actually it for the bad reviews. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> because I didn't read that many bad books and I genuinely don't have anything to say about them anymore. One other thing to note though is that <laughs> lately, aside from vlogs, I've just not had the need to talk about books immediately after I read them. Like I feel like I need to sit on some things more than I used to I guess because all the stuff that I hated I didn't really feel the need to discuss it back then and all the stuff that I loved I didn't really want to talk about. Like I, I think I've mentioned that I read East of Eden like a couple times in some videos but I still haven't talked about it and I don't really think I'm going to like in detail but let's go in order now back to Ajin I read I think a lot of volumes up to like volume 14 or something like almost to the end and that's why I don't want to finish it I really enjoyed this manga genuinely I watched the show twice because I the second time I wanted to kind of remind myself to read it I genuinely enjoy this quite a bit. I didn't think I would because in the beginning I was like a bit iffy about it, but the main character is hilariously relatable to me, so that's one thing. And I really, really enjoy the cleverness of it, I guess. It's a bit more sim simplistically clever, not like intricate like Death Note, but I really enjoy it. Like it has a straight storyline that it follows, it doesn't meander, it's to the point. It's very engaging and it's very interesting in general to have both the main character and the antagonist are immortal. So that's a very appealing storytelling arc, I guess. And I'm going to have to force myself to finish it. So again, I haven't finished it because I hate it. It's because I don't want to finish it. <laughs> then we have East of Eden. This was probably the highlight of the beginning of my year because, you know, have you ever had an experience where a book just finds you? Like you see it in a bookstore or, or you see the cover or you heard it heard of it somewhere and it just won't leave you alone. That's how I felt with East of Eden because I'd heard of it, I saw the cover, I saw it in the store, I flipped through it and then for like two weeks I couldn't stop thinking about it. Then I finally bought it for Christmas and I read it in the beginning of January. I loved East of Eden. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Like it was an immediate five stars. I read those his 600 pages in three days. I absolutely adored East of Eden. It's now like right here with my favorite classics. Phenomenal. I loved it. But again, if I hadn't read this as the first time back book, I probably never would have gotten to it. <laughs> then I read the Dune graphic novels. I'm not going to talk about that too much. It's just Dune, but it's very, very pretty art. I would recommend it. <laughs> I also have been rereading The Witcher. I don't want to say anything else about that really right now. I read Howl's Moving Castle. Like I'm just skipping over the stuff that I either don't want to talk about right now or just don't have that big of an opinion about. Then I read all of Noragami, which was the <laughs> feature length film. And I loved that video, by the way. It was so much effort though, but I loved it. <laughs> I did read Season of Storms for the first time, so I will talk about that. That's the first time that I read the last Witcher book. I adored it. It's I think it's like in top three of the Witcher books 
maybe even top two. It might be better than The Last Wish for me. I'm not sure. But it's all one book. It's not short stories. And it's almost like an apology for what he did in Lady of the Lake. <laughs> because he's back to his style. He's back to the story. All the characters feel like themselves again. And he he is apparently, apparently really good at prequels really good at prequels. I mean, he said in an, in an interview recently that if he were ever to write more Witcher books, he is never going to write a sequel. He's just going to write like a prequel or a midquel or whatever. And I stand. <laughs> He's also a raging feminist in this book for some reason, but I loved it. I loved it. The entirety of this book was just a joy to read. And I'm a little bit sad that I didn't read it the last time, but I was way too upset. <laughs> I was way too upset to read it. This was like the perfect time to actually like give it a chance. But it's really good. Like I would, in in terms of The Witcher, <laughs> I would just recommend you read like the books that aren't part of the main series and read Blood of Elves. And if you can stomach it, flip through, <laughs> flip through book two and then books three and four are pretty good. Never read book five. <laughs> yeah, then it was all an origami. Then I reread Before Vendetta because... I didn't read it in 2022, which is an abomination. I reread Watchmen every year, but I usually reread Vendetta every year too. I didn't last year, so I read it now. It's just such a pleasure. It's such a pleasure to always read it because the art is beautiful and the story is so strong that you almost don't want it to end. Every time that I read it, I'm like, I don't want this to end, even though it's so good. Like the speech that he makes, I typed it out so I have like a document of it so I can read it anytime I like. <laughs> Alan Moore, in terms of writing, like impactful sentences, is like top, one of the top writers out there. And then continuing on my <laughs> Sapkowski binge, we also have Rune and Rising. I read The Tower of Fools. I never intended to read this book at first when it came out because I was like, oh, it's historical, like there's a lot of Czech, Polish words. I don't, I don't wanna, but again, like Providence itself, I was interested in it and I started my Witcher reread right when they translated the third book. So I bought the first and second books. I mean, I bought the first book, finished it, then bought the second book. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. The Witcher is better because it's fantasy and he doesn't have the constraints of history. But I feel like this is what he really, really wanted to write at the time. Like, he wrote this immediately after Lady of the Lake. And it's very similar to Lady of the Lake because that was also history-leaning. And you can tell that he was already writing this or in the process of coming up with it. Because this just feels like something he wants to write. It is very very vulgar <laughs> and very just crude I guess but in a way that suits me because it feels so Slavic there's no other way to describe it like it's very very just gross but so so funny it's hilarious I would just laugh out loud while reading this book and his strength and character work is as strong as it ever is here because he's just that good at character creation. I love the three main characters. You don't even care what the point is. Like you don't even care where they're going. You just love every person that they meet and wherever they go, you know it's going to be fun. I love The Tower of Fools. I would absolutely recommend it. Not that many people actually read this one because it isn't as commercially popular as The Witcher. And I'm currently reading the second book, which is Warriors of God. I'm about halfway through. I also love it. It is really good. His beginnings are a little bit rough, I will say, in this series. Because every time I start the book, I'm like, if this is how the rest of the book unfolds, I might actually kill myself. But as soon as you get past that, it's so good. And you don't really want to put it down. This is the last book since East of Eden that I read on my commute. And kept reading when I got home. That's very rare that I do that, by the way. Then I read Rune and Rising, obviously. And the last book that I officially read is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Aurelius. However you say that. However you say that in English. The fact that in the last <laughs> three months, the most, like the majority of the books that I read were classics 
philosophy i mean yeah it's one philosophy but you'll get what i'm aiming at like classics philosophy the only fantasy that i read was the witcher i mean kind of how's moving castle sure but it was just a very different range of books than what i usually read this is obviously the only one that i'm reading right now after this i want to buy and read book three that I also kind of want to continue on with the Wheel of Time because I'm really craving some hard, hard immersive, immersive fantasy right now. I'm also contemplating having another Tolkienathon for my birthday. <laughs> I did one for my 19th and I'm gonna be 22 now, so I might, I might do it. <laughs> but we'll see. I'm just really craving some fantasy right now. I have a couple other classics that I really, really want to read. I'm also reading The Secret History, by the way, right now, which... Here's the thing. Dark Academia as a genre, as an aesthetic, is something I really enjoy. But I don't love the books. I don't love the themes. Like, I don't care about the academia part and the and the elitism, elitism part and the, like, pretentious rich people part. I just don't. It's not an aesthetic that I really, really enjoy. But if I like the secret history, then maybe I'll think about the other books. And if I don't like the secret history, then I've officially, like, tried the best of the best in the genre. That's the way I'm looking at it. But this was a bit of a chaotic chat. But that's how I wanted these videos to just be, like, very, very specific and to-the-point thoughts <laughs> about these books. Not just endless rants. I think you get enough of that in a reading log, so... I will see you in the next video, whichever one that might be. Let me know if you'd like to see something specific because I could always use more ideas. Why not? And I will definitely do a mini unboxing for my birthday. But I have no idea how to center a video around that. So in any case, I'm reading currently this and The Secret History. And everything else that I read you can find on my Goodreads. So... I will see you in the next video.